and if say a hero can save us, I'm not gonna sit here and wait. Is that how that goes? No. <laughs> it's not. And they say that a hero can save us, I'm not gonna stand here and wait. <laughs> well, I'm gonna call up Nirvana and tell them that Chad, that they can replace Chad Kroger's dead body now. Oh, wait, that's the <laughs> black. Same band. This is a guy who had the first album. I have no regrets. That's a guilty old pleasure. Look at this phone. Even though when I was a child, I knew right away three, like four of these songs. No, yeah, four of these songs sound alike. Well, so the whole meme of, oh, every song sounds the same, was there from the beginning. The whole and, album sounds the same. Not really. There's some, there's some pretty, like... Pretty dark songs in there that I like, uh, but for the most part, Silver Side Up is just okay, except for like the cool bangers. There, like I said, there were four songs. Two of them sounded alike, and two others sounded alike, and I got I would get confused until I heard the lyrics. It's like, oh, it's this song. Never mind. Well, welcome to uh, welcome to Nickelback Cast. I'm your host, Tavarius Funkel. Uh, this week, we're going to talk about uh, how someday was included on the uh, soundtrack to the movie Torque. Which is a, a knockoff of, um, which is a motorcycle-based knockoff of fa- the Fast and the Furious because that was, there, which is, was a big hit at the time, uh, and I think it starred not Paul Walker, some other uh, nondescript grizzled white young man, Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, uh, I don't know, I can't remember. Remember when Mark Wahlberg was like swole as hell? Yeah, I saw Pain and Gain. But anyway, yeah, welcome to Nickelback Cast where we talked about how. Nickelback was uh, used by Sony to make a song for Super Spider-Man. No, not, not Nickelback itself. Just Chad Kroger and Joe and uh, um, whatever the hell that Jack Black looking motherfucker look. <laughs> Chad Kroger's brother? No, no. Chad Kroger's brother is the best part of that music video. Is he the? He's the bass player, right? He's the bass player doing all the cool, intense faces <laughs> with like the hand, with like that hand, with like that uh, Lemmy Klimster like Motorhead mustache. Let me clemster. Let's is he's he's, he's in, dead too, but he was the one that like collecting the Nazi memorabilia, really, right? Yeah, it was weird, a little disconcerting. Anyway, welcome to uh, welcome to Nut Nits and Green Salad Cast. Can we just go? Uh, <laughs> real talk. Welcome to Tavi Radio. Oh my God, this is the first time I've had to introduce the show proper. Welcome to uh, Betty Crocker Cookbook Cast. Well, we're gonna re- we're gonna explore the uh, meat section. Welcome to Intro Cast. We can't get this intro right. Welcome to Tabby Radio. Uh, with with you, as always, are your hosts, Taverdius Funkel and the Wolfman. You know him. You sort of love him. No, I think people love you more than they love me. <laughs> We're not getting on this topic again. No. Stop being such a self-pitying cuck. No, no, the only person that sells pity around here is probably Saber, and he's, <laughs> that's why I keep him locked up. Yeah, and it's me, like in Jones. It's me. Hey, it's me. Who's but- the traitor, BC? It's me. <laughs> You're lucky he wants you alive. Live, uh, dramatic reading of that. Episode, uh, episode 5, the, uh, aka the watercolor episode, aka one of my favorite episodes I've had to done. You still have the originals for it? Mm-hmm. Are you kidding me? Those will go on sale on eBay very soon. You could probably make a couple bucks off selling that. Wow, thirteen whole dollars off of all fifty shots. I'm not kidding. I think we're more. If they, if you sold that for thirteen bucks and there was fifty shots of that, I'd do some quick maths. Hi, welcome to Capitalism Cast. Why well, don't know? I, You'd be selling it, them for like about three eighty four. Three eighty four. Three dollars and eighty-four cents. Capitalism is broken. We have USD. To, USD. I, that is. We got. Uh, I say we seize the means of production. Thirty-four. That'd be four euros and. And you know Euro. what's you know what's better than thirty-four? Three hundred forty pesos. No, twenty-four. <laughs> but anyway, welcome to. We don't have an intro. Uh, We've had many now. How? So uh, I don't know. What's the sixty-four say? Theme song. Theme song. No, we don't have a theme song. The theme song comes before the show. But anyway, this 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 podcast has been a failure. We're gonna just turn it off right now and go home. Think so about our lives. Go, you guys can go go home now. I'm done. I've, I've had too much to eat. You've barely started on your bowl of Jello salad. All right, 
So, all right, that's the. All right, let's start to my new segment. What is Taffy Face eating? That's a. That's actually pretty damn appropriate. Considering you're the Mavi, you're the meal boy. I was gonna call you the Mavi boy, but what's the Mavi boy? The Maverick? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the... you're regular John McCain over here. You're gonna you're gonna get uh, put in a prison camp in Vietnam, and then you're gonna you're gonna come you're gonna uh, get let go, or run for senator, run for president, lose, and everybody and, made fun of you. Um, and then Trump is gonna call you a coward for being a prisoner of war. Trump is a piece of shit. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, we all know it, but you know the people you're the, you're the team who people people who vote for you guys for that, that that poor old boy in, in North Korea fat. Hey, you He's fat shaming. <laughs> Did someone call out Donald Trump for being a fat shamer? Well, I mean, we can't. I mean, we still, we're making fun of him for the way he drinks water. But was that two hands? <laughs> two hands. Remember, two hands. You gotta stick your lips out. You gotta make sure you get a very last suck in the drop. It's almost like how a dog would drink water. <laughs> That's like how Bizarro from the DC Comics would drink water. Come on. Uh, you guys voted for him. I've never, like, I have, at least, uh, hey, say what you want about Obama and every other president before him. At least they knew how to fucking drink and eat. Also, Trump, remember what, during the campaign when Trump was trying to get on, the me- on like, all the uh, Mexicans' good side by saying he loves... Mexican food. He I love my Mexican that. food. It's the greatest. I'm eating a taco salad from my and then you realize he was he was he was eating off of, on top of someone else. He did. He wasn't even using a table. I think he was eating off of Melania's lap or something. Why? I don't know. Trump doesn't. Trump's not a person. He's a he's a ham golem. Remember? Ham golem. The we, the enemies of salt golems. Not really. They're just somebody had too much time on their hands. Imagine making a man out of spam. That's what Donald Trump would be. That is what he is. A man made out of spam. Which is disgusting because I love spam, low key. No, not and that's not low it's, key. Uh, people, okay. This is a little bit. This is a little bit of a thing that people should. Okay, for, okay. Uh, tell us what you're eating first, and then we'll go into Tabby Face Food Rant Corner. I don't know. I, I I picked up this. I I don't know. I walked here, saw some homeless man in Romania. Picked up this Jello salad he was eating. Pretty good. Got some cars cheese, pineapple, coconut. Uh, it's in a pool whip, I guess. So, what I give out of ten? A solid eight. Hell yeah! But back to uh, back to what I was saying. This is a bit of a, my message to artsy fartsy food guys. Don't be afraid of spam. Come on. If our boys out there in World War Two ate it, then we can eat it. People also, do spam eat it. Spam's delicious. Fry it up. Put it on an egg. Fry it up. Um, it's using. So I'm using the delicious Hawaiian pineapple uh, sandwich. Yeah, it goes good with pineapple, man. Pineapple, barbecue yeah. teriyaki sauce, pineapple. But mm. people, but people need to stop being afraid of spam. People should just eat more. I'm not afraid of spam. Uh, spam. I buy it a lot. There are so many people out there. Like, okay, there's so many people don't actually know about me. I follow closely what food culture is nowadays, and I hate it. I hate these artsy fartsy hipsters being like, hipsters, hits, hipsters being like, hey guys, here's how you make a cream, a, a cream corn. Put some stallions in there. Make sure you cream up that. Make corn sure it's all there. locally grown. Make sure it's all locally grown. Here's some uh, oh. whole milk that I bought for twenty dollars from Whole Foods. It's Quit bes- being like that. It's bespoke. It was made spe- specifically for me. By one fa- by a farmer who owes one dairy cow who only makes one who only milks it once a year, which oh my god, that poor cow, it needs to be milked a lot. And here we have this. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if you've ever this corn that's been. Look, I don't know if you've ever been on a dairy farm or have milked cows before, but you know, my family has, and you got to milk those cows every morning. You know, I imagine I imagine because <coughs> you're you're a lycanthrope, your whole family would have been lycanthropes as well. Oh, no, no, my, fa- my, my no, my family uh, are just r- are a normal Mexican family. I have a condition that I've embraced. Got kids, Mister Maniac? Oh, nah, not anymore. What's that mean? What's that? Mean? <laughs> did, he, did he just leave us? Did he just leave his family and fade away from them, or what? He's look at this. He's got a whole bucket of chestnuts. Is he foraging for his own food? 
But anyway, back from Mike and Jones foraging for food. We saw we should be in food culture. We shouldn't go back to the seventies, but I think we should go back to the two thousands, where it was just Elton Brown and Die Fieri going around. I don't know, man. I mean, binging with ba- with Babish makes a strong argument for making beautiful looking food. But that's food from that's food from movies anyway. He can be a little artsy fartsy about it, but I still enjoy his content. I don't know, man. I mean, like, I some. I mean, someone once said that like it's. It's hard to appreciate um, like artistic food culture when you know that like some of that food could be going to starving kids in really any country. At least we know with Babish when he makes like a big thing like is El Tampano he ate it with a bunch of dudes. So no one, so no one, uh, it's all that food didn't go to waste. Also, quit with the that food could have been to Africa. Come on. Oh, I didn't say to Africa. I mean, I meant this country. It could have gone to like there are starving kids in America too. Would you? So, okay, here's a video that everybody got. Everybody gets mad at, like, Matt's Mofo and Filthy Frank for wasting, like, a bunch of ramen in, the, in their ramen off video. Do you, mm-hmm. think, do you think it's, do you think, would you be posting in the comments of, like, that food could have been going to starving children? I think they're being ironic when they say that. No, no, no. Like, God. I wouldn't, I, well, first of all, that's not my first thought, because, again, I watch food videos where they make really beautiful looking food and find new ways. Here's the thing, we're now in, like, the age of, like, fusion food. I mean, we've been in the age, but now we're reaching the point where, like, we're embracing not only... I mean, back then, making, like, certain foods look nice, which is, like, that really nice, like... You get, like, one tiny single serving of a fubu with, like, this nice little drizzle and, like, one leaf, and that counts as a salad. We should get we should get away from that. I don't like we, that. We're getting away from that. We're slowly Im- making... A, we're, again, we're in the fusion period, so now we're fusing... That kind of like fancy, like hot couture, uh, sorry, hot cuisine. Couture is fashion, cuisine is hot cuisine kind of like look and embracing more of like combining it with like actual servings that a non rich, I'm watching my weight person would eat. But I hate when like the person's like, oh my god, look at this basil that I just picked out from like the garden five minutes ago. It's like, and he just like snorts it up his butt or something. He's like, Man, this is the best basil. Yeah, I mean, in the we, world. we we gotta get away from that. But then again, I think I think you should be like check out the basil. Let's chop it up a bit, put it in the sauce. I mean, well, Babish does that, but he also expects you to make every single part. Like when he, I mean, he doesn't expect you to just use waffle mix. No, he makes you to make a whole fucking like waffle from scratch, doesn't, which is asking a lot. Doesn't just expect you to buy like caramel sauce in a bottle. He wants you to boil boil salt which to be fair it's like it's that's inter- that's good information because then like you could you know how to do that see, now see cooking cooking nowadays should be how Boris from Life of Boris does it where it's like here is oh that's what you mean it's practical yeah I mean I, like I think we're getting to a point where we're getting we're you know we're, I think we're always getting better like with food I mean I think we're I think get, my favorite period of food was just like good, like good eats Elton Brown era so 2000s yeah because you know what here, Elton Brown is, before he went all Breaking Bad, and he's probably, like, selling cocaine and, like, doing all these things to fund Iron Chef America. No, he's not selling cocaine. He's selling, like, he's pretty, it's like, what if, Hei- like, what if, like, when um, Heisenberg says, Jesse, we need to cook. They actually cooked. Iron Chef America. <laughs> oh, God. That's, want- that was a good show. I remember watching that. That's the thing. The chairman was my favorite character. They had, they had all the start. They had all, like all. I don't know. Like I, I know the chefs from that era. Like you know, good old Mario Batali. And your favorite man, uh, what's his name? Uh, Bobby, uh, Bobby Flay. Bobby Flay's a jerk. <laughs> he is a jerk. But do, oh, what, what's the name of the? He's a jerk, but that mofo can cook. I know. That's why he's so he kind of earns it. You know. Yeah, like what, when you talk what, about chefs being what about what, what what about um the Japanese the, the, the Japanese yeah the Japanese chef uh, Morimoto name? Morimoto was awesome okay okay, okay the okay. man would just sit there silently and just see him prepare this like dish and he'd never lose here's the thing what I like about Morimoto welcome to the food guest what what I like about Morimoto is that like everything he makes you feel almost guilty by eating it because he I mean remember when we were talking about like oh food, making food into art Morimoto makes some of the most beautiful looking dishes I've ever seen in my life. I think uh, Joji Filthy Friends says the best. Japanese food is like on a different level. Than, oh, like, he would say that in nationalist. <laughs> I mean, he also, think, he, he also thinks uh, we have an obsession with ramen and sushi when we should really like be appreciating things like uh, tonkatsu. Oh yeah, uh, tonkatsu. Yeah. 
tonkatsu. Yeah, I, I, of course, man. I mean, like we have. A, I mean, we we like the stuff that's like famous from Japan, um, as like, opposed to like the actual like the other food that's really good. Going to mess with red bean paste, dude. Red bean cakes are delicious. People need to stop worrying about too much of the uh, but the raisins and the cheesecake. Just enjoy it. Yeah. You think we need to get away from the boba and the bubble tea, and need less Homer Simpsons, and more and more and more teachers in school. We need more. No, we need more Homer Simpsons, <laughs> more <Less> moon waffles. Because <laughs> that's the type of cuisine we should be cooking. Waffle bat, waffle. Is it waffle batter? Caramel, <laughs> liquid smoke. I think if your food doesn't have not have liquid smoke, no matter what it is, it's not real cooking. Off that tangent, you gotta improvise. Nice. But you gotta improvise, Lisa. Let's see. Tom Collins mix cloves. Mmm. <laughs> a pie, a pie crust. Mmm. <laughs> I love the way that. Oh. Maybe she misses. Nah. Is there a compilation let's where of see. Homer just like? Let's go see mom. <laughs> I did. Homer ate. <laughs> Frozen pie crust, <laughs> whole cloves, drowned in Tom Kong mix. <laughs> and even he knew that was a bad idea. Is there a compilation of like a oh, Homer's weird, com- weird? If there isn't, there needs to be right away. Where's Gary's version of like of Homer's cereal? Imp- improvised breakfast? Heck yeah. Well, people have remade the Flaming Mo countless times. They saw it Universal. Oh, yeah. Because there's a whole Simpsons area. Mm-hmm. I miss Universal Studios. Let's have a can of hat moment. The live action version. And, and let's advertise Universal Studios. Remember when the Grinch was the thing there? No, 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 no. Do you remember the can of hat movie, which I watched um, countless times as a child? And I'm guilty of. I'm not going to lie. That's a guilty pleasure. It's Okay. It's uh, kind of quotable. <laughs> All right, Nivens. Time to die. Dirty ho. I'm sorry, baby. You know I know. You know I don't mean that, love you. One of my favorite parts in that movie is like the, is the scene where like <laughs> the pinata scene. No, no, no. The, no, when they're cooking. Oh yeah. Cooking the muffins. And yes, maybe a wee fire extinguisher. No, one of them just, just goes on like this rant, and they're like, "Hold on, guys, we'll be back in a second. Yeah, I remember it was like, like you better shut your mouth. Or I'll kill you, and I'll make you look like a bloody accident. Cat, your tail. What about it? Oh, it seems they've chomped it. Son of a bitch. And then a good... Oh, God. I... And I, people said Mike Myers doesn't look lively in the suit. He... He moves around so much. He's okay, got, people... Okay, compared to Jim Carrey in, the, in like a... In okay, a Jim Carrey's face molded to that makeup. When he... Like, he pulled off that, like, bar, That, like... Um, that Chuck Jones, like, Grinch smile, that whole, like, whole, whole face turns into, like, one rictus grin. Here's the thing. I, I, I like both, man. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I mean, uh, my girlfriend's dad put it best, which is, like, I don't think, uh, we needed a movie that psychoanalyzed the Grinch, but I think we're a much better society for having done so. I mean, I think we could do away with the whole, like... Again, finding out why he's such a why he's the Grinch. Okay, but it, it I also do, can do away with the fact that the Who's don't need to be don't need to have that makeup on. They're trying to make it look like Seuss, oh God, yeah, it's really unappealing. I'm not all. Who came first, Grinch or Cat in the Hat? Grinch. That was the start. Okay, because that, okay, that explains why no one in why no one in Cat in the Hat looked like a Who. Because they're not Who's apparently. Only only the only the Grinch has them as Who's. Um, which is weird, because, he, okay, here's the thing, so, like, almost... Was there a whole trilogy of these live-action Dr. Seusses? No, there was only two. I thought they wanted to make a trilogy. Well, the Horton Hears a Who would have been... No, that's is... hard, no, that's hard the whole CGI. Yeah. Especially that stupid Lorax movie. How did they get so popular? This... Ugh! The and... Onceler isn't... The Onceler and Taylor Swift. The Onceler is, like, a... Uh, is, is a Tumblr heartthrob. Why? Because, I don't know, he... People, I don't know. You go then on Tumblr. Then that stupid uh, ice movie with the Jack How Frost. Thick can I be? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, off that tangent of Doctor Seuss f- food. Oh, I got one more thing to say. Okay, so the only thing I don't like is that only two people in How the Grinch Stole Christmas don't wear who makeup, and that's Lakota Fanning and Cindy Lou, 
Which, okay, I give it a pass. Maybe when they're children, they look like regular human children. They grow up, they get those weird noses. That weird lips. And the other person is uh, the Grinch's love interest, which is the only hot who in the entire uh, town. The one in, like, the skimpy Santa outfit. Also, I just like that scene where, like, he takes Wistie. Right, well, my, actually, uh, a lot of the opening scenes with him are really interesting because it's like... Um, the way he acts is pretty... It's, like, actually pretty relatable to most people. All you know, these young people now. It's like, let's see. Uh, which my schedule? Uh, 4.30. Uh, while on self-loving. 6.30. <laughs> uh, dinner with myself. That sounds, that you know, dinner with myself. I can't cancel that. <laughs> I can't that I so, can't cancel that, that again. Like, that sounds like any old Twitter user. That sounds like me. Yeah, it's like the, the Grinch is actually relatable as a per, as like someone's like, oh wow. And Mike a, Myers in the cat suit isn't relatable. You don't go around chopping your tail off by accident during No, I also don't show. go around trying to like disguise myself as a as a pinata or meet Paris Hilton in underground raves. Oh the yeah, scene. she was in the movie. In the deleted scene. Oh yeah, you won't go around advertising Universal in, in this big roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what I was trying okay. to quote. Also, you know what a weird thing is? So the woman that plays her babysitter, who's supposed to be like a really bad like Asian caricature, is played by a Swedish woman. They turned to get Lucy Liu in a fat suit. That would be great. I would actually love that. <laughs> I think that would have made oh, that joke funny. Oh, you whizzed my taco. <laughs> Oh. Alec Baldwin was in that, and he played a he played a a, a monster. Wait, was she, was Alec Baldwin the the boss of their mom? No, uh, Who was he? That was no, he was the boyfriend. Oh yeah, they, they, the one who was like really who was like who looks all perfect and looks like he has a good job, and then he goes home and he he's just getting repossessed all the time, and he's like a fat slob in a in an A shirt. I think that that was Alec Baldwin at his lowest. <laughs> I no, Alec Baldwin at his lowest was Thomas and Thomas the ta- Thomas and the Magic Railroad. That was a, that was at his highest. So you want to be in a movie with the talking train? The sparkle, face? sparkle. Okay, Tom Tom's the ta- like I think I think this is the Sunny the uh, Happy Sunny Railway series. I forget what it's fully called. Oh, uh, Shining Time Station. Yeah, I think Shining. Shining Time Station has a lot of weird dark stories too. Yeah, I mean, like in the first se- like the first season, uh, freaking Percy, no, not Percy, uh, Henry gets almost walled up like a cask of Montalado style. I don't know. I still like. I still want my version of Thomas. Where like, where... which one do you like more? Yeah, which narrator do you like more, Ringo Starr or George Carlin? Uh, Ringo's classic, but I grew up more with George Carlin. Yeah. I, well, I mean, if you were watching it on PBS, you probably had you. You had they, Ringo. They, on no, PBS you had, you had Ringo. Well, Ringo's only in the in, in the it's BBC. Actual in, the, in, in the in the BBC one, but we on the American side, we actually have uh, Carlin first. I but think. I think. Which we, is weird because, like, okay, here's the even thing. on BBC we had uh, we had Ringo. Yeah, but like, but if you're watching on like PBS, you had George. Yeah, well, that well, that's what I watched it on. But here's the thing. They got George Carlin, which is a comedian with a really filthy, cynical, like, uh, stand-up routine to voice a children's cartoon, and that's not irony. I don't know what is. But he did a really good job. Oh, he did a great job. He's got I that- still want my Thomas reboot where, like, Thomas starts rebelling against her Topham hat. <laughs> or the, yeah. fat, the fat controller. <laughs> the fat controller left. You are wrong. <laughs> All right, so you want to get to the topic? We've spent 26 minutes doing intros and talking about food and talking about the, cin- the uh, cinematic... <laughs> Masterpieces uh, of Dr. Seuss The, the, the live-action cinem- uh, Dr. Seuss movies. All right, now back to the actual topic of the podcast. Or pro- we'll, we'll probably just talk the other half. Uh, where we want to talk about uh, YouTube personality. Just pretty much like, what was it, YouTube personalities? It was YouTube personalities. Like, I mean, not... I mean, okay, we always talk about YouTube oh, okay, personalities. YouTube personalities, but... Where does it turn off? Or does it ever turn off? Or the the fine line between playing a character and playing and being yourself and when when people use that dumb defense of, oh, I'm just playing a character. This yeah. is not who I am. Because, guys, I don't think you realize this, but I fall under playing a character. Taffy is not a real, is not a monster who has monstrous strength and locks up his friends. Uh, I We don't, we don't, we're not holed up in Romania. We're holed up in, like, some boonie town in California. Hey, I like this boonie town. 
We're holed up with the Goonies. I love this bar. It's my kind of place. Homer, you can just stay in my bar forever. Bar tavern forever? Take it from me. Well, Bart, looks like <laughs> you're dead. One of my favorite videos of all time. Who's there? It's me, Bun Tainton. Okay. All right, so anyways, no so one problem that I've always talked to Tabby Face about, and I've, I've always told him this because of my certain criticisms with a lot of uh, YouTubers, and it's when uh, YouTubers uh, do videos where they play a character, uh, quotation marks, and after one, after they say something that is kind of horrible or act in a way that's really bad or just act or just, I mean, just do something that is not acceptable by polite or or at least like you know a society that has some decent moral values they always go in, they always pull up the fence like oh that wasn't me guys they're just playing a character that's like not really Jake, how like, I, like Jake Paul like Jake Paul like freaking uh, rice gum because cause they say, like, guys, this is how I really am. Remember Rice Gum? He did that whole thing where he's just like, guys, I'm just a regular kid. In a, and then you see him in walk man- into his mansion, walk up his stairs, and then you see him put on his not his hundred his like $200 headset and his $600 gaming chair in front of his, like, $1,000 setup, and he starts playing Call of Duty. I'm not flexing on you guys. No, but then there's also, like, the whole... The, uh, Jake oh, Paul's like, I'm uh, not really a jerk in public. I'm just a sweet old boy. Then his parents even defend him, who themselves have YouTube channels for some reason. That's disturbing. Wait, is, 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 there, con- is there content more... It's vlog- they're vlog- I think their dad is called like the React Dad or something. But I'm, you're not answering my question. Mom. Is their content more enjoyable than their son's? Uh, Jake, Paul, Jake Paul's dad just talks about Jake Paul and the mom the same way. How would you feel if your parents had YouTube channels? And they just did vlogs or like... I would like it more if my parents did something worthwhile with their vlogs. You know, like if, you know, my dad was doing, like, car tune-up tutorials or something. <laughs> or, uh, I don't know, I mean, that like, just, I would want, my, if my parents were, like, YouTube people, they, I would want them to, like, do something worthwhile. I mean, like, well, anybody, anybody, anybody with a, with a webcam, or, no, anybody with a phone and with a camera can do a vlog. Yeah, but I mean, I would. Yeah, I just I would want like my parents to do something worthwhile, you know. Like, I mean, well, like my, I said, well, any- my dad was a child clown actor who's now arrested. No, a child clown salesman who's now arrested. And I, I would like to see his vlogs from prison. Are there prisoner vlogs? That'd be interesting to see. Give like let, let prisoners have like as a way to reform. No, but then like, what if they start like convincing the public to like help them um, get out of jail? Like what? Like to help them say that they were innocent, and maybe they weren't. Like, what if they're actually convicted, like criminals who actually well, right can be now. proved that they did wrong, and then they had the. Well, I wouldn't want to strap a camera onto my father because he's like he's in jail for a good fifty years for child clown abuse. I don't know. It's a, I can't talk. I can't legally talk about this. <laughs> you just did. <laughs> All right. Anyway, well, we're not in U.S. It, it, jurisdiction. It, it, we're in it, it, Romania. Or, or, well, it's like if they gave Char- old, old and now dead Charlie Manson like a you vlog. Dead. <laughs> no, Charles Manson is dead. I'm glad. Hope he's burning in hell. I, like, okay, I can. That, this, this is the last time people listen to Beatles songs, in my opinion. Okay, uh, I have a coworker at my IRL job. He actually bought the album. Uh, he has a, the album on vinyl that. Charles Manson did, and he said it's the wor- some of the worst music he's ever listened to. Not because of the weird race war messages, but because it's just like it is literally like bad guitar strumming and hippie and hippie ramblings. So it's like, uh. I said, like, is it worse than like the Shags? Like, no, the Shags are enjo- like the Shags were a band made up of sisters who their father uh, had a vision. I think from God that said their children, that his children would be these great musical artists. Reality was he was a crazy man who thought that and told bought a bunch of instruments for his kids and said, "Here you go, make me rich." And he didn't make them rich. No, their music is awful and unlistenable, but really entertaining and hilarious. It is like the room of music. I gotta look that up then. But are manos the hands of fate of music? 
It's really bad. What, they, what do you like better, Manos or, or The Room? Like, everybody knows The Room, but no one knows Manos. Manos used to be the big thing. Like, before it was Plan 9, then it was Manos, and now it's The Room. This whole, like, trinity of, I, like, dark mo- of, like, not dark movies, of, like... Uh, bad, of, bad movies? Bad movies are so good. There's a whole list that you could look up. For example, X versus, like, Ballistics. Uh, Ballistic X versus Sever is really bad. Assassin starring Antonio Banderas is really bad. <laughs> um, but... For me, I, I would have to give it to Manos because it, it I have a longer history with it. It's a, you, you and for me in in like that uh, in the in the weird sweater thing that was a fad. <laughs> the master would not approve. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, I mean, just like I I I just don't like when YouTubers always have to go go with the whole. Uh, it's just a character defense because sometimes it's just it's not a character like a good example recently was um well not recently but it's been going on for a while but like CinemaSins for example has gone on like has gone on uh, many times to say that the character they play in their videos is just that and when you I guess when you look at their vlogs where they talk about their like thoughts on like the Hollywood machine and everything it's there's no difference between who they are as a person and who they are when they're being, like, nitpicky assholes who think that their critiques are valid. And then, they, and then when you say, oh, these are critiques, they're like, no, no, it's just me being a nitpick. These aren't valid critiques or reviews. And then the thing is, it, people do take them as, like, critiques. People refuse to see certain movies no matter how good they are because CinemaSins did a video pointing out all these flaws which might not actually just be flaws and just be them being jerks. For example, like, also another good example is, like, is Jake Paul and Raystone again, again? Like, mm, I'll, actually, I'll stray away from that. Is maybe uh, used, yeah. a, a old example used to be like uh, not James Rolfe because we don't know when we know when the nerd is on and we know when James is on. Yeah, because the nerd is an exaggeration, and James is just a regular guy. Who, but we don't know when Mike Matisse on. That's another thing people. <laughs> I don't think you know about this. If you don't follow uh, James and the Cinemasters. Oh, okay. thing. oh, another good example. Uh, we know when the, when when is Ethan off. That's what we're. That's a good at. question. Okay, uh, we'll get there. But um, another example of when you of people you know who are, who are on and people you know who are off. When is Teddy Face on and when is the uh, when is the man behind the behind the mule on on? Uh, when I see you off of this podcast and when we're sort of doing this. But when do the people know that? I don't know. They're they're, they're smart. We have a lot of intelligent people. Look to listen to you have to be of, uh, of a high level of intelligence to listen to, to understand this podcast. Okay. I didn't want to spoil it, but I have to pull it up. But keep talking. Okay, so another good example of people who we know are on and people we know who are off is actually uh, freaking Doug Walker of Nostalgia Critic. We know when he's we know when he's just Doug and we know when he's because well, yeah, because we he's got a hat. The bum. Yeah, like, well, well, the bum is a, definitely a character, and so is the freaking like the, the guy with glasses. The the nostalgia with critic glasses. is like I mean, the nostalgia critic I would say is I mean is an exaggeration of him, but like. Doug as a person is a really nice guy. Like I would actually want to hang out with Doug. He seems like a regular, I mean, regular normal guy. And, it, and you wouldn't want to have a conversation about movies with James Rolfe? I would, but I, w- I know I, we'd get into a fist fight fast. Whereas with Doug, we'd actually ha- sit down and have a civil conversation before I would get... You'd fight g- James Rolfe? I would fight him. And is, would you fight well, him? Does he, does he know Kung Fu? Does he know any martial art that you know of? I don't know. He's a nerd. I can take him. I don't know, like, but here's the thing: you would have to go through Mike Matee first. How dangerous is Mike? He has a twelve. He have a, he has a twelve inch penis that he's showing on Twitter. <laughs> That's still a ruler. No joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just gonna have to. I'm just gonna have to do. Um, I'm just gonna have to dodge that weapon, man. <laughs> okay, uh, this is a callback to like. A, you remember the Street Fighter uh, Flash Tab? <laughs> no. Yes. <laughs> Dude, okay, there's this, there's this little animation someone made of like Zangief versus Dawson. Zangief's like, are you serious? <laughs> Dawson keeps like slapping him from, from afar. And you just see Dawson chuckling and then like you see a dick slap and throws Dawson's face. And you see Zangief and like it throws back to Zangief and you just see him like raise, up, raise his eyebrows like, hmm. <laughs> but, here's, but here's the thing. This is all. This is all a joke. Mike's penis has been a subject of conversation about among Cinemaster fans forever because they literally see that they literally see it like they literally like see it poking out in videos. 
in like his pants and shorts. <laughs> anyway, enough of enough of. Uh, I'm just gonna have to dodge dodge his 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 fifth limb, okay? But anyway, enough of uh, Mike Matisse. Uh, okay, another good example oh, is when a uh, like I know when when Brad Jones, the cinema snob, is Brad, and when he's not uh, the cinema snob because the cinema snob is an ex- is. A parody of like snobby film critics. Actually, in fact, it's a parody. Of Cinema Sins. No, it's actually a parody of Roger Ebert. <laughs> because Roger Ebert reviewed Friday the Thirteenth back in the eighties, and he did not get it. So, because he was a total like film snob about it, and that's what uh, the snob is. Um, you know, like you know when certain like people who play critics. I think the only character I think I don't know... I think the one person who I think is trying to blur the line is maybe Linkara. I feel like I think you know when... Like, before you would know when Lewis was on and when Linkara was on. Because Linkara has a... Linkara spa- the same thing. Come on. Admit but Linkara it. has, like, a spaceship and is a Power Ranger. That's a green screen. And toys. Of a man-child. You're lying to me. No. It's, you <laughs> it's have- real. It's so real to me, goddammit. So Lewis, so, tell- so was it Lewis or Linkara who made that really bad web comic about it? Oh, that was Link- that was Linkara because it was uh, it was credited to him. It's literally said Linkara. So was it? So was it Linkara who who th- who threatened people on like on image boards about his comic, or was it Lewis? Mm, probably Linkara. Lewis was. It's kind of like the Hulk and Bruce Banner. We had a few years where Linkara put you know had. Yeah, let's, let's like so where's Lewis now? Stuck in the bad street while while Link, stuck in the bed, stuck, stuck in the trunk, stuck in the trunk while Linkar has the wheel, has like the full control of the wheel. Uh, to anybody who gets that reference, you saw Thor Ragnarok. Good job. Um, yes, absolutely. Well, we know when. Sp- well, actually, Spoonie and uh, Spoonie's a dick. Spoonie, Spoonie and Noah are the same pe- person now. Spoonie and Noah, they they're Grey Hulk. <laughs> I used to watch Spoonie a lot, actually, growing up. Oh, man, people still donate to him. Well, it's because his counter monkey stories are hilarious. I mean, if you ever want to hear, listen to, like, really great D&D stories... Yeah, but we wanted, a stu- we wanted that stupid movie he was making, we funded it, and we never got it still. That's it, Spoonie. Give me back my money that yeah. I never gave you. The only thing I saw you ever donated to was, uh... You, the only thing you ever donated to that I was aware of was, uh... I won full. Let me see animations. Oh, I I I, I actually uh, funded the Kickstarter for the Blu-ray collection uh, of um of Don Hertzfeld. Yeah, which I still have all this all the stuff. I still have that fr- that thirty-five millimeter frame Did from his it? movie. It was signed, right? It's not signed, but it's from his like it's a it's a frame from the actual like thirty-five millimeter reel of it's a such a it's such a beautiful day. So, and yeah. I still have it, and I still watch, it, and it's still good. Shout out to Don. Yeah, Don. I can't wait for it. It's uh, for uh, World of Tomorrow too. It's gonna be awesome. But Anyways, but yeah, we know when those people are on. Actually, that's, that's that, okay. That's actually a no, good. No, one's, no, one's been here. Or, no, well, let's well. No, okay. The, we only the okay. Only Spoonie, know. Spoonie, when he was in the Spoonie experiment back when that was a show, that was a character. But now Spoonie is just the name. Is just the moniker. It's his pen name. It's not a character anymore. But it's just that's n- just Noah. By the way, have I ever told you about how Noah's last name makes him sound like a like a Mega Man X villain? Antweiler. Antweiler. Yeah, that sounds like Mega Man X villain. Okay, for I mean specifically like okay. What was it? Thunder. It was thun- It was like Thunder uh, Yellow or something. No, no. Remember there there. Remember the Mega Man X game. Champagne one. No, no. Remember the, the Mega Man X game where they named all the villains after where they named all the all the uh, the robot masters after. Members of Guns N' Roses, like, um, like Duff Mc, like they named like the whale one Duff McWhalen, uh, slash something, um, act, they, like they named them after the members of Guns N' Roses, and uh, like that that game specifically makes me when I hear Ant Wilder, it's like yeah, he'd fit right in with that. No, I, I, I think more about no, like Noah, like, Ant, I, like I imagine like Ant Noah, Wyler, Noah Ant, like the whole his full name Noah Antweiler sounds like oh yeah that's a Mega Man X villain ain't it? No, you can talk like you can put them like OG Mega Man X and like right that's a chill penguin and, and like, Boomer Kowanger and Boomer Kowanger and you and put Antweiler there. Who's like, your yeah. favorite one? I remember Chill Penguin the most, but it was more like the not Flame Mammoth, not Flame Mammoth. What's the one? That, what's the Hawk one? A Storm Eagle. Storm Eagle, yeah. Mine was Stink Chameleon. He was the best. 
Because you like, you like reptilians, like, mm-hmm. the Gila, like the Gila monster. No, he's, he's fine. So we're going into, but transitioning, talking about Gila, more or less H3H3, H3, but Ethan. We gotta go back talk about Ethan again. Okay, and this I think this ties in with his most recent video, where he uh, pretty much slut shames a bunch of women on YouTube who are who uh, who he's jealous of because they're able to make money for for sneaking for sneaking around the system and but he doesn't know how to. It's pretty. Guys, I don't really want to like you know yes. do horrible like do horrible sex things. I like, guess you do, Ethan. Yeah, like no, no, I'm a parody of the people who watch it, but I'm also making fun of them for being sluts. Listen up, Ethan. Don't be ashamed of saying you uh, that you that you lost that. <laughs> You lost that no dick. What was it? No nut November. All right. We're, we're still going in it. I'm still zero days strong. I was two days strong, but I'm getting ready for dick to short December. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it, yeah, it just like I never know when Ethan is on. Like, I I get when he's making fun of stuff, but like I don't know if like this Ethan is like who he is. And here's the thing, based on videos when he does that like where just being like a dick and then he, later on he's like I'm not really acting this way when you watch the podcast Ethan I think you kind of like that 24-7 like I think you're just like this naive man child who, some, who somehow figured out how to make internet videos and you're sort of like an idiot savant when it comes to like There's Chris Chan can make internet videos and anybody can Christian doesn't know when doesn't know how to edit his stuff though, or when to cut out stuff. He just uploads it in the raw. I'll call the asbestos. <laughs> I'll call. I'll call the detectives. I'll call the police. I'll call everyone in the power. My power. <laughs> you better turn that thing to Jesse. Jesse. I don't want to lose is, you. I'll never be your queen. I'll never be your queen. The, You'll be ma- my queen whether you like it or not. <laughs> Starfield is at his lowest in the series. It's, it's one of my favorite scenes that I drew up because it's him at his most vulnerable. Because <laughs> yeah. Starfield, does Starfield have that unspoken rule where he doesn't hurt women and children? Yeah, he doesn't hurt <laughs> women. <laughs> Hold on, it's, no, it's Cal. Okay, guys, a little backstory. Uh, for most of you who probably thought it was maybe Garfield who killed Mar- uh, Marmaduke Jr. Or, or the boy. <laughs> 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 Um, or the boy. Um, it was actually Calvin. It it was Calvin. Calvin has no qualms about murdering women and children. Um, has he tried to kill Liz many times? Oh yeah, he's tried to kill Liz. He, Calvin was a sociopath. <laughs> I did not take kindly to when someone on on a fort on a Desu arc, or no, it was a four chan forum, uh, described. Uh, Calvin as an autistic sociopathic man child. Um, Calvin at best is probably like a teenager in your series. Yeah, he's he's a teen. Yeah, his whole backstory was good. was gonna be was going was gonna be actually uh, tragic in the end because like he lost his parents during the Stand War. Um, That's something. Some, some sadly something you'll probably never explore. Oh no! Hell no. <laughs> Because you're done with, you're done with both I'm, I'm, I'm so done with it, because I don't want to put myself in it. I'm just... I, like, plus, that's that's landing in a bottle, man. Plus, you got to share the spotlight with your guys like, like Duane and Danger Rooney. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to take... I mean, well, first off, Danger Rooney is doing a fantastic job of remaking my series and preserving my art style. So, kudos to him. And I can't wait to see how he handles... Uh, the, how year he, is, the year is 2099. The only thing left archived... His poor star. This is what the aliens and the uh, and future humans have left of our generation. I hope. Other, other that or, or other that or a million or they just find a secret stash of copies of Jingle All the Way. <laughs> <laughs> we believe this is what ancient society is. <laughs> no, they find a they find a secret. As you deal all the way, Jungle to Jungle, Christmas with the Cranks. Jungle to Jungle is a bad movie, and I grew up watching that movie. And of course, the whole Santa, the whole Santa Claus. Remember when we had that love affair with Tim Allen for a while in the nineties because of Home Improvement and uh, the year and the Santa Claus. No, the year is twenty ninety nine. The apocalypse has happened. The only the thing f- left in this world in terms of human record are, 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 are VHS copies of Jingle All the Way, 
The Santa Claus, all three movies. No, there's four of them now. <laughs> oh, no. All four. There's been four Santa Claus movies. Four, all four okay, Santa I Claus. Okay, I actually like the Santa Claus, the first one. The second one's... The first one's I, a good concept. Tim Allen kills Santa Claus, so he has to become Santa okay, Claus. Okay, it's, it's a dark concept where it's just like, goes, anybody who kills Santa becomes the next Santa. It's like, Ty, it's like how Typhus... Which is weird, because that means like... Maybe that's where I got the idea of how you get Tiny Face title. You have, to yeah. kill the, you have to kill the last one. And it's got to be by accident. No. Because I don't think anybody goes around searching to, like, kill Santa Claus so they, be- they become... That's a dark term for the series. Is that the fourth did... one? Someone's trying to kill Tim Allen so he can become the next Santa? Listen up. If anybody wants to become a Tiny Face, you have, to go, you have to go all the way to the secret Alp Mountains of Mount Meatball, hidden in the Himalayas, and have to go through all previous Tim... All previous Tim time. Allen's. <laughs> it, it's guarded by Tim Allen clones and Ty- every and w- Tim every incarnation of Tim Allen on TV and movies. So you got to find Buzz Lightyear, Tim the Toolman Taylor, the Santa Claus, uh, Jungle to Jungle Tim Allen, Jim- uh, Last Man Standing Tim Allen, um, and, and then we're throwing like uh, what's that? What's that? Ten- what's that Christmas? Oh, really? No, what's a Christmas movie that, uh... Oh, Christmas with the Cranks, Tim Allen? Yeah, that Tim Allen. Tim Allen is... Blo- probably... Hmm. No, he was at his highest. He was trying to get funky with the, What's Her Face. Jamie Lee Curtis? Yeah. Which There's, is surprising, because was... the last time anybody wanted to get funky with her was... Uh, Arnold, Schwar- was Arnold Schwarzenegger in True Lies, where she was pretty dang hot. What was that Christmas movie Ar- Arnie was in? Jingle All the Way. Oh, was Tim Allen in that? No, that was Arnie. Oh. Arnie's, like, it was literally about Arnold Schwarzenegger. Alright, well, we'll throw, we'll throw in Jingle All the Way, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Kindergarten Carver, Arnold Schwarzenegger. We've gone so far off topic, but then again, do we need to, like, really go on about it? I mean... No, because I'm trying to, I'm trying to teach people how to become mule boys. Okay. Once you go all, do all these holiday icons and Tim Allen clones, you now have the acceptance to go inside the hall of the mule boy. And then you have to fight all the previous incarnations of Tiny Face in, in some ghost ethereal form. No ghost busting this time, though. Nope. Can't call Christian Wig or Bill Murray. Can't call... No, Bill Murray won't even do it. You can't even call the original Ghostbusters, the one that had a gorilla named Tracy. Yeah. If you mention Ghostbusters to, to Bill Murray, he'll just walk away. He hates Ghostbusters. Like, he hates those movies. He didn't even want to do the second one. He did the first one because it was just like, whatever, it's a movie, I guess I gotta do. And then the second one was like, it was, it was a big hit. It's like, yeah, but this movie's so dumb. Why are they busting ghosts? I don't get it. Why don't they just bust the nut instead? <laughs> Something Bill Murray would actually say. Why are we busting ghosts and not nuts? Bill Murray is Bill Murray's like I think not a human being anymore because he shows. I think he's like an elder god. I think he just shows up whenever he wherever he wants whenever he wants. He's Raiden. <laughs> he's pretty much Raiden. If Raiden showed up to people's like parties randomly, uninvited. And then because he invited himself and it was something to do. You know, you know the actor. He also doesn't have an agent. You just have to summon Bill Murray to show up in your movie. Well, and like how do you summon Bill Murray? You just get like... Cut. I don't know. There's no no one's been able to... I mean, Wes Anderson knows how to do it. He's Wes, the only one who knows how to summon Bill Murray on the regular. Why do you, he to summon Bill... You know, would you rather have Bill Murray as your summon or would you or would you be like... Uh, <laughs> Tim Allen as my son. No, no. All right, here's your three choices of summons. Tim Allen, Tim Allen, Bill, Bill Murray, Murray, or Jerry Seinfeld. Not Jerry Seinfeld. Though. Hell no, not Jerry, no, not Jerry Seinfeld. Seinfeld. Unless he's in B. George Clooney, George Clooney. Like, you can either have the Coen Brothers summon, or Wes Anderson summon. God, that's a hard one. You think, okay, no, Coen Brothers don't don't summon George Clooney. They got him locked up in some closet. No, George, George Clooney, like... <laughs> George Clooney goes to their house all the time. And, and and every movie that the, that the Coens have made where they make George Clooney look like a fool is their way of pranking George Clooney. Because, like, he's a heartthrob, and you're just like, no, let's make him look like an idiot. He's a clown to us. He's not a heartthrob. You think this guy's hot? Look at him. He's a clown. He fit well in the Batman suit, which is the only reason he was Batman. Where's Val Kilmer nowadays? He's got some health problems. Aww. Where's he was Mike? in The Snowman. That's actually he. That was the one movie he made this year. And I guess he. I guess he was in such bad health, they couldn't probably record his audio. So they had him. They had. I think not even him. They had someone else dub over his lines. So every time he talks, it was always a shot from behind. So you never see his lips moving because you couldn't understand what he was saying. Oh. Let Val r- relax. If he was such in bad health, why'd you get him out to like do this mo- this unfinished movie? By the way, apparently The Snowman wasn't finished, and they just put it in the theaters that way. 
I mean, people joke about Justice League being unfinished. That was a movie that was finished that was then unmade. Uh, but, anyway. but the snowman was like a legit like we did ran out of money and we couldn't finish this movie, so we just put it the way it was. But you know, this maybe this off topic of going to actors is really another message about how when do actors or personalities turn off and turn on? When is because artists, they're professional actors and they're and when is Bill Murray not Bill? When is when is Tim Allen Tim the Toolman Taylor? Oh, he's he's mean? lost himself. He's complete. When like, is Arnold Schwarzenegger not the Terminator and just Arnie? When he ran for governor and ruined their... Uh, when is he not the governor and just Arnold? Now. his tank? Now. When is... <sighs> when is Stallone Stallone and not Judge Dredd? <laughs> oh, he was Dredd. He was the first Dredd, right? With Rob Schneider as his sidekick. When is Rob Schneider not... What's his name? Deuce, Bruce... Deuce Bigelow or Deuce the Bigelow. animal or the hot chick or... Really, any fucking movie showed up in like the two thousands and nineties. Yeah, when is Bruce? When is Rob Schneider? When is Rob Schneider not? Do when is Adam below? Sandler? Adam Sandler and not a character all the time. He's never turned. He never turns off at all. When is Kevin James not popular? Uh, you know what? I know when he does turn off. When he makes serious. When he actually makes serious movies. Punch Drunk Love. Punch Drunk Love. Rain on Me. And actually, on Netflix now, the Meyerowitz uh, stories. When Sony won't fund your prod, your your vacations, your friends, so you have to go to Netflix. When is Kevin James, Kevin James, and not Kevin James? Or Otis, or Otis the Cow. I think he's just always a him. By the way, do you like King of Queens? No. Do you think it's a bad show? Have you seen his new show, Kevin Can Wait, where they had, where like in the second season, the they uh, from the from the first episode, they they like open up with like, oh, my wife is dead. Because guess what, the. Uh, the actress who played my wife on uh, King of Queens, she had a guest cameo, and people loved her so much because they're like, hey, it's just a King of, Queens, uh, King of Queens. So now let's just kill off my wife on the show and then replace her with the, my wife from the previous show. And now that's the show now. I like the face you're making. You're just disgusted by that. I want to... I, I just want... I just want Can we... Re- to- okay. I want him to just ter- keep the keep the Paul Blart persona on. Okay, I like. I, I got a question. One of, one of Kevin Spacey, Kevin Spacey, and not a pedophile. When he's in Call of Duty. When he's in Cape Tax. When <laughs> is oh, when is John Cena not John Cena? He never turns off. He never turns off. I don't, n- n- oh, except when he was a heel at the beginning of his career, when he was like. No, that, pe- no, it's that when he was so when, he, where people are when he was a swole Eminem knock wrestling Eminem knockoff. Who, you know, pe- who used to do the five knuckle shuffle with a chain, and that was that was his dirty move. And he was he was always um, his whole rivalry was with Brock Lesnar. In fact, the, his, the in fact, the steamed am of a man. Yes, in fact, his his move the fu is a parody, like a legit jab at Lesnar's uh, uh, move the F five. Which the F five is the highest rating of a, a tornado can get. But here's the thing. So well, you, know, you know that happened so long ago that people are just are people nowadays asked. Oh, I know. No people nowadays ask like John Cena. How can you never turn a heel? When is John Cena the John Cena and the and not the Marine? Never. <laughs> He's always the Marine. John Cena was still John Cena when he. I'm, was... I'm saluting by the way at Tav. <laughs> I tried to salute. He did that one Marine movie, and now everybody thinks he was a Marine. Even he thinks he's a marine. Also, for some reason, John Cena still remembers that he was like Fred's dad. He lives in the refrigerator. Oh no! He. Li- Do you think when he's at home, um, he's out. He's out. Brie Bella um, opens a refrigerator and finds John Cena hanging out there. Mm-hmm. He's married to Brie, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. You think? Do you think she? Do you think she has to like scold him? Is like. You emptied out our whole fridge so you could pull this stupid prank? Sorry, honey. I just, you know, I'm remembering... Also, how can a guy with thugonomics, with like a PhD in thugonomics, be so like... That, that was, okay, that was that was from his heel. heel days. I can't believe he still kept that. He still kept that, but he's such a gentleman now. Like, he, like anytime you talk to John Cena, he's just like, yeah, that's me. Always making kids here, kids, you know, dreams come true. When you have cancer, just talk to John Cena, he'll show up in, in, in a second. What do you want, Billy? John Cena. I'm here. What do you want me to do? Kill the president. You got it. I'll put him in. Oh, I'll drop the five knuckle shuffle on Trump. What are, okay, here's the thing. 
When are when are wrestlers just gonna start running for president? Well, wrestlers have have uh, we had a Minnesota had a wrestler for like God knows how long for uh, um, what you want? Jesse the Body Ventura. Oh yeah, <laughs> he was the governor <laughs> and he sucked. Oh, he was. Well, then again, there's not not much goes on in uh, Minnesota. Was Minnesota, so. wait, was Minnesota the the water incident thing? No, that's uh, Michigan. See, see, Alex Jones, we do need the floor in the water. <laughs> Yeah, hell yeah, we do. We also need we also need the pipe, inf- the uh, plumbing infrastructure actually taken care of. You dumb bastards! I would like to turn the freaking. Okay, box. okay. Again, another example of when of when they're on and when people are off. Jo- I want, does Alex Jones ever turn off? Just the body Ventura didn't turn off. He still acted the same way he does in like freaking Predator when he was uh, when he called himself a sexual tyrannosaurus, and that's what he and he acted the same way when he was gov. <laughs> chew, eat, you better chew this tobacco. It'll make it make you into a sexual tyrannosaurus. I'll do you be. <laughs> That's my favorite phrase. Where are you? <laughs> like what are the, my business cards. It's like in Jones, YouTube, uh, YouTube animator, podcaster, sexual tyrannosaurus. Mine just says mule boy, fat man, bum. <laughs> you got a bum? No, we live out in a radio tower. You do. I only come over. Well, I got everybody else locked up. You, have you fed the, the uh, your other hosts? When's the last time you fed them? You mean today or like? <laughs> <laughs> yes, today. Uh, <laughs> I can oh, bet no. you on that one. <laughs> that's, that's if they're still breathing. Oh, God, Tav. I turned up. I know. I want more stories from uh, from Kisaragi about uh, about that anime. He he broke out a while ago. <laughs> he broke out. You guys had a fun day, and you and the, but it was all a ploy to get him back in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> that's how it goes. I had to find him. Like, you know how many rooms he's destroyed? He literally just punches his way out. So he's like Ricky O. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He punched his way out of each room. <sighs> Anyways. There's even, a, there's even a time where I shoved him in the same room with Saber. And well, you know how that ended. Saber yeah. died in two rooms I was also killed. Yeah. Well, it happens. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, that happens. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, the whole... Back to what I was saying. What we were saying, though. Like, the whole when are people on, when are people off. I think it also ties in with this idea of, like... I mean, I re- I've already said that I think it's a lazy defense. Like, when people say this, they're just... They're, they say it because they peop- they want to keep this facade of, like, they're... Like, they don't want to be responsible. They want to absolve themselves of any, like... It's like, oh, no, it's not... It's vlogging Jake Paul that was a jerk. Not real, normal boy Jake Paul. These are all stunts. It was a prank, dude. Like, I mean, Joey Salas, I think, is never, on- never off. I think that he's just... A big uh, dummy. He's a big dummy who's willing to get, like, tasered by, or pepper sprayed by Justin Roiland. Okay. All those pranksters, and I, lo- I love them because they're never on. Aw- no, yeah, they're... N- nah, you, I'm pretty sure you don't like Prank Invasion. That sexual predator. Well, that fake one. He doesn't actually go out. Well, he's he- a sexual predator, not a prankster. Well, yeah. Well, I, he... Okay, could- I like, okay, okay. I like, all right, let me rephrase I, like oh. I like the Bradbury boys and, like... Joey Sausage. Actually, no one, you know what? They're just so honest about Prank themselves. Invasion, if you actually dig into his whole uh, thing, he's actually a con man. Okay, yeah. when is Max on and when is he off? You see we it. know when Joji is on and off. It's super... Da- it's like day and night. It's yeah, because like jo- Joji's like a really nice guy. It's Jekyll and Hyde. But it's really weird because like he chooses to like act like this really despicable character. But like... But, okay, here's here's where I go into like my next thing about this. We're going a little long, guys, but this is my final point. Like, for, like, there's a great Kurt Vonnegut uh, quote. I probably said on the show before, but it's from a novel he did where a person, this down-on-his-luck writer, gets recruited by the U.S. government to, sne- to infiltrate the Nazi regime as an officer and pretty much be their spy. And one of the quotes is, uh, we are who, who we pretend to be, so we must be careful who we pretend to be. So, in this book, he, 
pretends to be, he, you know, disguises himself as a Nazi. He has to pretty much act like a Nazi. And he pretty much becomes one. Like, people look up to him and, like, um, as this, like, white supremacist fascist. So it's like, for, so, I mean, with, so, like, by the end of it, he pretty much just, like, kind of ends up believing his own thing. Or people believe who he is and he just kind of becomes this person. So, my question is, like, when, like, when does, like, like, when do you lose yourself in a character you're playing? You know, like, there's always that blurred line of, like, you know, maybe this person, like, in examples like Cinema Sins or Rice Gum, maybe they were always this jerk, you know? this Maybe they were always this, like, nitpicky assholes or, like, these, like, overly privileged jerks. Everybody can be a Guy Gardner. Yeah. <laughs> Guy, well, Guy Gardner is, the, is, like, the common man's jerk. Um, jerk. No. Guy Gardner was a jerk lantern. I know he was. Remember when Batman knocked him out so hard that he knocked himself out again? Yeah. But anyway, so like Like if you were always this person and then you and then like when people call you out for your like horrible behavior and then you say it's just a character, that's a dumb that's a bad defense. Or like maybe you don't know when you're playing a character and when you're being yourself or maybe like when you think you're being an exaggerated version of yourself but then immediately switch back to you being you and you kind of blur the lines what if what happens when you play a character for so long that you become that person and you for and then like when you go into the fence like i'm just playing a character this is just who i this is just i'm not really this way but then you find out like oh no maybe he wasn't this way before but like now they are like when when do you think like like, do you ever think there's like a like? I think there is a fear because it, it, it's happened before. It it, hap- it actually does happen. The idea that where you just become this character you're playing, like Larry the Cable Guy. He wa- he wasn't that. He was just a regular white collar comedian who was kind of boring, and then he found success in playing a redneck stereotype, and now he is that. Now he's become Tom Mater. Yeah, or, or uh, Andrew Dice Clay. His whole comedy routine, he, he played this black this black leather uh, clad, like, who's macho... That guy, who's that guy who plays Medea? Oh, Tyler Perry? When is Tyler, play, when is Tyler, Tyler Perry just Tyler Perry and when is he Medea? When he's playing Baxter Stockman in a Ninja Turtles movie. He was super good. I love his... I love everybody in that movie, man. Yeah. Like, Especially... Oh, not Casey Jones. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, guy who plays Arrow on Arrow. You're good as as, uh, as Oliver Queen, not good, you're, but you're not my Casey Jones. And I think that's it's not his fault. It's the fault of the script. They just didn't know how. To... They, they, they couldn't get. They couldn't get some like some Italian guy from the from Brooklyn. To okay. Come in to be fair, Casey. Elias Cotius, in, who played Casey in the first Ninja Turtles movie, is a Greek per, is of Greek descent, but he's he's, he's such a New Yorker kind of guy. Whereas, like, uh... Who would be your... Who would be your Casey Jones? I don't know. I'd have to look up to see which kind of tough, uh... Like, New york kind of guys there are. Who are, like, muscle-headed, like... Spor- like, sports gear... Cl- like, uh... Wielding... Uh, vigilantes. John Cena. John Cena. <laughs> John Cena has Casey Jones. I would pay money, but he's gotta wear the wig. He's gotta wear the wig. <laughs> Oh my god, that's so good. I want that now. Uh, we gotta write to Michael Bay. Dear Michael Bay. Shut up. Listen to what I have to say. Here, listen to my order. Those two nuggets. Uh, give take me the six out. piece. Those give two me nuggets. The I want take the them out. I want... <laughs> Dude, those two nuggets throw them away. I just want the four piece. <laughs> I turned to Jack Black. <laughs> be <Beat> Adolf Hill. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, I mean, I I always fear that when when YouTube personalities play like a really despicable character, like they play like a parody of this person. I think Tyrese like, is very despicable. Yeah, but you're like in a charming, like a kind of actually harmless way. <laughs> he killed his he killed his friend. Well, well, here's an example. Jod like. Jod the character and Jod the person are the same, Almost. but I think, but I one, think that's a, one of them's on a dictator. <laughs> but I think Jod the person is on their way to becoming Jod the character. But here's the thing. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I don't see. I don't see Jod the person uh, becoming a dictator. I don't see Jod the person taking over a section, 
a section of a city and, and turn it to a country, hey, they'll be like, England is my city. <laughs> Man, that's what I'm saying, though. It's just a thing that I think about, because it's like... like When is Gucci Mane just Gucci but Mane? I think, and when is he just a normal guy? Never. Like, I mean... I think maybe that's not the case of like Joji because like I I think the part of the reason Joji doesn't want it doesn't do filthy Frank or even Pink Eye videos anymore is because he's actually found success as a music artist. No, which he, he's o- he also wrote a he wrote a, he wrote like a whole like uh, filthy Frank and like Pink Eye book thing. Well, yeah, I, mean, I think but again, like I think he's able to like I think he's smart enough to distinguish like to like know when to stop being the character before he gets lost in it you know and again like even uh someone say like what about i dubs when is he ever on oh are you kidding me like i dubs the the i dubs the boy is like just watch his squirrel videos he's, he's an okay guy like if you watch him do interviews of like other person interpersonalities like for example on ethan's podcast or when he did that uh, what's that one i think with like i think with like chris stuckman or something he did like an interview with him uh, some, some other guy, but he played. He did an interview with him, and he was just. He's actually a very like meek boy. Harmless. He's actually really meek and harmless. He's not like. And Tana Monju was afraid of this, afraid of the Skeletor looking. Yeah, he's afraid of this like skinny kid, and that's the thing. It's just like, like I know, like, Idubs like looks like he's acting a certain way, and maybe like when he does speak in his content comp persona. Uh, or even like maybe on camera, he probably like has to turn on like more of his like. He possibly he, on camera, he probably like just becomes slightly less p, slightly less PC in that sense. Because like he does like I mean for example, if you watch him in, like when when uh, when, e- when when Ethan, Ethan was, just starts saying uh, you know when we're dropping the N word uh, in the other like, F word, you, you can like, see you can see him cringe because it's like oh god Ethan don't do this because you're not smart enough to like. You're not to be smart. fair, you have to have a very high IQ to understand Idubs videos. Uh, that's, good. That's, a, that's a meme now, huh? I mean, Saber wrote, Saber wrote a version of my of mine from uh, Tay Face. To be Yola. fair, that, I think that's actually true. Remember that comment someone wrote on my channel, probably like maybe episode four, where like you don't understand Tay Face's postmodern sensibilities. Yeah, but I think that's true. Well, uh, anyways. He's like a, he's I think, of his time. I think people like Joji and Idubs do know when to turn it off, and I think they do know like they're smart enough when to turn it on and when to turn it off. And I think oh, you can some see of Matt's, the you can see Matt's turned off like be Matt's when like during his like Pokemon videos or his own oh yeah, because he's like he's a big fat nerd. Yeah, he's just. He's but just, what about anything for views? It's super hard to tell. It's um, also super hard to tell when like Keem is on and off. No, Keem's never off. Oh, he's I so feel so bad for his family. I think he's. I think he's only like turns off and becomes a normal guy when it comes to his like daughter, and his like maybe his girlfriend. That's like when he's off camera, just like mm. having family time. Except for the fact that he ran over a dog on New Year's Day. Never forgive. Her, yeah. That, what that what about Colossal? When, when do you think he's on and off? I think Colossal. I think Colossal. I think that's who who he is, right? Yeah, I think Colossal's just a big prick. <laughs> You used to be so pro colossal. It's funny to see you. No, turn yeah, I still am. I still am. Oh. I just know he's an asshole, and that's his character. Well, for example, like um, I'm at, at the podcast. You can see in the in like the podcast, you see like that the episode colossal. where they had uh, Zoe Berger was so heartbreaking to me because like it was a legit like it was a hit job. That was a, a complete like um, Keem and Zoe did this whole thing just to aggravate and like pretty much. Like ruin Clowns Day, and it's something that I, I, it's just like, like listening to you it know, was. Cole also lives in some like hut in Thailand, so he's ahead of our time. I think no, we live we have better living conditions than than him. Wow. <clears throat> Anyways, like I just think like I always like I said I always wonder like I think with uh, YouTube per, with YouTubers who have like maybe not a. A greater grasp on like themselves will probably lose themselves in like this character. Like it's funny you say that because like you see someone like I think live streams are super like if you want to know how the person really is. I think when they live stream like a game, they really become who they actually are. Like hmm. for example, like you think any for anything for views like this big fat jerk and for little fat, but when he live streams, he's just this really chilled out guy. Yeah, I think that's for sure. I think like there, I think a lot of people. Yeah, I, you know what? I I agree with that. But yeah, for it's example, just like you know uh, who else? Who, mm, 
No, because Rystum live streams, and he's always just been Rystum, so that's just how No, 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 yeah, he, that's how he is. A bit jerk. Um, but, we, okay, here we go. This is the example. I think Colossal, well, 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 Colossal well, I think... streams, like, just games, and you just see him get frustrated, like, especially at Cuphead, and he's just kind of like... Like everyone? Yeah. You know Darkseid Phil actually beat Cuphead, but he couldn't beat Persona 3, which he has me still blocked. Does the Saber Sparks have you blocked? Yeah. I'm not sure about uh, the other. I know. I know. Uh, Pan Pizza. This Pan Pizza. J- okay. J- I, J- list, by the way. I is- wonder if Pan. Okay. Do you think? I think Pan Pizza is always like that. They like on and off. Yeah, Pan Pizza is just a prick. Actually, I would say Pan is a bit more lighthearted when he's actually on, and super dour when he's off. Watch his like. I think he has to try hard to make to like cheer himself up to like be. I think Watch his character is like he's a bit a little bit more up. And he's more of a downer in real life. Watches, watches like gaming channel. You see how Pan it really is. Oh, gaming channel is the best form of a person's character. I yeah. Watch I, I mean, if I will, I, I would never. I mean, I think this show is more when I'm on when I'm off than because if I did a streaming thing, I would just Bob Ross the whole thing, just like be more soothing. Like my characters would just be like Bob Ross if he was playing Atari games, or Bob Ross if he was building. If he was trying to like build a spaceship, in a build a spaceship, or or tie balloons to people, see how see how far they go up into space into another planet. Yeah. Or Bob Ross when he's trying to play a cowboy game with that's that that harms the player more than it harms itself. More than you harm Fish, other people. Fistful of frags. I feel like that game tries to control, tries to like steer you wrong. I love that game. I, I, I like that was my like on like online multiplayer like shooter game that I that I pretty much played for the last few years. That was my TF2 replacement. But now I'm back to playing TF2. Uh, if you guys, I dare you guys to find me on T on TF2. They won't find you. You don't speak. You don't. You're not one of those people that kind of like speaks on things. I I know. And I was playing last night with a bunch of people who were talking. And I was like the silent like I think I had them thinking like maybe this dude's a bot, <laughs> but he's got like he's got Skeet as his as his uh, icon. From Your John version of Skeet or just like- my version of Skeet, the one with the magic eye, magic unibrow scene. So yeah, if you if you can find him, that's me. Now right. let's wrap this up. Uh, you got anything else to say? Anything to advertise? No, I mean I, my thoughts are pretty much just like I, I learn what to turn on and off. Yeah, learn to want to turn it on and off, and if and if that's who you are, you should just be honest, man. Like it's, like we all know, like if we can if we can pinpoint when you're on and when you're off, uh, the on which on your based on like the videos you make or the streams you do, then don't pull out the whole. That's not really how I am. Um, defense, because that's that no one is gonna believe that. Only the children who don't watch everything you do probably do like the eight-year-olds on youtube that make a majority of your of everybody's audience eight which e- i mean even I don't, th- I don't believe even eight-year-olds watch mm. yeah eight-year-olds do watch my content i don't think eight-year-olds watch my content but i think they do because only eight-year-olds would write top 10 anime battles on everything you make i don't know i am getting by the way for people out there who watch my videos i'm getting real tired of of people posting top t- top ten anime battles, top ten anime betrayals. I'm getting real tired of those comments because they're dumb and the meme is. What old. is much more than your top ten Legend Jones video? If they do, I'll take back everything I said about Watch Mojo, and I would act and I'll show up to their offices, and take a fist fight with their president. John, you you take you take this damn thing down. <laughs> you you, upload, you, upload, you, upload. <laughs> you, up, you upload it. You unload it. Cut it down. <laughs> I'm very angry now. I open myself up to you guys, and you ruin her life. You hacked into her. Good to Tell your Tarumo, Tarumo story now. All right. So the other night, I got I got an email from Change.org that I like. I I, I try to be a full, uh, full-on rapist. So <laughs> sorry, a philanthropist. My bad. And oh god. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and I try to like you know if I see something I like, I just like to sign it, something. So I saw one about like two remote, uh, remote slaughter, so, elephant slaughtering in Africa going on. I'm like, oh, I want to put a stop to this, but I couldn't help but laugh when, it, when the literal email title was called elephant slaughter. You just thought Turumo for it. I thought about the time uh, Turumo was killed by Hisraji. 
where Turmo almost went full elephant. Wow. But anyway, uh, before we end the podcast, I'll do a shilling. They don't they don't sponsor specifically, but they do sponsor me. Click down below if you want anime items and save five percent. I think ten percent off from J List and get your latest hentai's. Nice. I am not shilling anything except watch the skies. <laughs> Because you, because you know. Also, Romania doesn't think down much worse.